Hey, homeschoolers. Today, I want to talk with you about what I think is one of the most underused resources we have as homeschoolers. And I'm not talking about the public library or amazing field trips or a website that has all kinds of free resources and activities for us as homeschoolers. Instead, I am talking about people we know and come into contact with. I was at the gym recently when a man approached me and said, are you Melanie Wilson? And I said, yes. And he said, I am your husband's friend who went to Antarctica years ago on a research trip. And you wrote all about my trip on your blog. And I was so excited to see him, but I was so curious to hear his story of why he was thinking about this trip and how I had featured it on my blog. He said that he was talking with his wife about how you can Google yourself and kind of see what comes up. And, you know, he does scientific research. So he thought that would come up first. But when he Googled himself, my blog post about his trip to Antarctica came up first. And he was just thrilled that I had taken the time to do that. And he just thanked me profusely. And I promised to share that resource again with my audience. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. It would make such a fantastic unit study for you at this time of year. But it got me thinking that the people we know are incredible resources in our homeschool. And I made a list of all the people I have taken advantage of in our homeschool, more than 25 years of homeschooling, and just the incredible richness of education and experience that lent to my family and to other homeschoolers, which I will describe in a moment as well. And I wanted to do this episode and share those human resources that we included in our homeschool to inspire you to be thinking about how you can include more of the people you know in your children's education. So let's just jump in and get started. The first place I encourage you to look for people to enhance your children's education is family. The first person that I think of when it comes to family in our homeschool is my late sister-in-law, Nancy, who was a missionary, who every single time she was with my kids was educating them, inspiring them. But in a formal sense, every year, Nancy would do a presentation for her supporters where she would educate my kids and her supporters about what she was doing in missions and what the state of missions was around the world and in places where she had been visiting. You don't obviously have to have a missionary in your family, though, in order to have an amazing resource that you can draw upon. The second person I think of when it comes to family in our homeschool is my late father-in-law. My father-in-law started a beauty products and then moved into beauty furniture business. And he had my family, my immediate family, plus our small group co-op come to his business where he was going to talk with us about what it takes to start a business and give us his story. And I was honestly amazed and so touched. Uh, I have a video of him speaking to our homeschool co-op because this is why I was so blown away. Not only did he share his story and buy us lunch, he had lunch brought in for all of us, but he created an activity for all of the kids to understand what 
goes in to having and operating a business. It was so cute and well thought out. He had created these printables and um, he was amazing with the kids. And I just thought, what if I hadn't asked him to do that? An incredible memory for, of course, my children, but also a real blessing for the kids in our co-op. Then when I think of family, I think of the amazing opportunity that my kids have had to have an uncle who was, he retired this year, he was a curator of mammals at our local zoo. And on more than one occasion, he led a behind the scenes tour for our co-op. And the kids loved, loved, loved it. It was an opportunity to get up close and personal with the animals in a way that ordinary visitors to the zoo are not able to do. But it was more than that because another time when we were studying Africa, my uh, brother-in-law came over and shared his slides. He is an amazing presenter, a fascinating guy, and talked all about what his trips to Africa were like and just really enriched my kids' education and study of Africa at that time. Now, lest you begin to think that you have to have someone who runs a business, is a public speaker, is a professional missionary in order to take advantage of your family, I want to tell you about my youngest brother. My youngest brother had some learning disabilities when he was going through school, but he has worked for the same company since high school. And uh, he works in a black walnut factory. When I want to tease him, I say he works in a nut factory. (laughs) But my kids went to visit him and he took us on a tour of the factory and explained to us all the varied uses of the black walnut that is used around the world. And it was so fascinating. I think about what he taught us so many times, but what was amazing and so touching to me was the pride that he had in sharing what he does. And you have resources like that in your family as well. And I hope that you will begin looking for them. I'm going to include this next guest who I have had on my podcast a couple of times. I will include links to both Nancy's presentation on the podcast and this guest, Dr. Carl Werner, on the podcast. I'm including him with family because that is how we got to know Carl. Carl was doing some really amazing research, some creation research that just blew me away. I was already a firm creationist, but when I saw what Carl and his wife, Debbie, had put together, um, I was even more excited about the evidence that we have for our faith. We don't have to have evidence, but we do have it. And it's very, very exciting. So Carl not only brought his research to my children to really enrich their faith and their science education, but he also involved my kids in having them proofread and test out his materials. My youngest son was a part of his first video, uh, which was just really fun, really fun for him and for our whole family. So that is family. Think about who in your family could teach something to your kids. And it doesn't have to be a job. It doesn't have to be research. It could be a hobby that a family member has. They could come and teach your kids or your co-op. Next, I want to talk about your church. Your church is a rich source of human resources for your homeschool. One of my friends from church, one of our pastor's wives, went on a mission trip and came and spoke 
to our homeschool co-op about the country she visited and the children that she met and shared her pictures with us and was able to share her experience with us. And it was really very much of a blessing. I have spoken before, and I've certainly written before, about a church friend who came to us and said, I have friends from Spain, and there is a teenage boy from Spain who wants to come and stay with an American family for a few weeks this summer to really improve his English. What do you think about him staying with you? I went to my kids. They said, let's go for it. <laughs> we did. And it honestly changed, especially my son Sam's life. It inspired him to learn Spanish and become very proficient in it. He went to Spain to visit their family. And now that he is working as a PA, he has already had the opportunity to speak Spanish with patients. And I, I am absolutely thrilled that we took advantage of that human resource in our homeschool. Next, we knew a woman whose son was a PA when Sam was not even sure that that's what he wanted to do. And through our connection uh, with this woman at church, we got Sam the opportunity to shadow this young PA. And I know that it had an influence on Sam continuing his education and becoming a physician's assistant. So church is an amazing resource. I honestly wish that I had taken advantage of more human resources at my church. I wish I had had our pastors over for dinner and talking about what they like and what is a challenge about being a pastor. I wish I had had more traveling missionaries come over to um, talk with us about their countries that they live and work in and about what they do. That is a missed opportunity that you don't have to miss. Then next, your homeschool community is a very rich resource for you. One of the women that I did homeschool co-op with in my home for many, many years was a labor and delivery nurse who also really enjoyed doing science labs. I didn't enjoy doing science labs. She always had the materials ready to go. She was so organized with that. And she was also very diligent about staying on top of the kids, completing their tests. And I believe that studying for those apology of science tests helped my kids tremendously in college, especially uh, my daughter, who is now studying to be a nurse. And I know that it had a big, big impact on her and also just getting to know my friend who is a nurse. That was very impactful for her. I have another friend who was a professional photographer and an amazing artist. And she not only um, was in charge of things in our co-op, but she taught photography in our co-op and she was right on hand helping kids with art projects. And that really impacted my daughter. She adores photography. Now uh, she is really into the arts and I credit my friend and her influence and willingness to teach a class with that effect on my daughter. And then it isn't just the moms in our homeschooling community. It's the dads too. They are such a rich resource. One of the mom's husbands came and spoke to our co-op about his job and the path that led him there. And I felt like that was such an important lesson that he gave to our co-op. He talked about the fact that he majored in criminal justice, but he went to work for a pet food company and ended up being someone who is in charge of the software that analyzes the, the components of a pet food, 
um, the ingredients, what is in pet food. And so he talked about the opportunity that he had once to be a part of a criminal investigation. They came to him and they wanted an analysis of pet food that was found at the scene of the crime. And I think that that was a lasting lesson in you don't have to uh, worry so much about what you're majoring in because you never know what God has planned for you. And then my son was taking drum lessons from an incredible, colorful drum instructor. And I just thought so much of him and his teaching style. And I asked if he would be willing to come to our co-op and do a music presentation for us. And he did. And it was so much fun. He was fantastic. So think about the teachers, the coaches that you have, maybe just for your own children, that you could introduce to a larger homeschooling platform. Then let's think about our neighbors. So my neighbor is a teacher. And for most of her life, my daughter wanted to be a teacher. She was bound and determined she was going to be a teacher, speaking of how our plans can change. And uh, my neighbor was so fantastic about having my daughter come and help her set up her classroom every year. And then when she was old enough, she had my daughter shadow in the school. And it wasn't shadowing that changed my daughter's mind and made her want to become a nurse. But I believe that it was so helpful in my daughter's understanding of what it was that she wanted to do. Then we have neighbors who took an around the world trip. I was absolutely fascinated by this. And I asked if they would be willing to come and share about their trip with our homeschool co-op. I assumed that they would just come in and, and show us pictures and, you know, kind of talk about all the places that they went and that kind of thing. But they took it to a whole new level. And that is that they brought their backpacks with them and they explained all the things that they had to do in order to prepare for this trip and what our kids would have to do if they wanted to take a similar trip. It was an amazing experience. And so then, of course, when we move beyond our neighbors, we can begin to think about our friends. I had a friend who quite a number of years ago went on a long, I, I think it was three or four weeks, a long trip for work to China. And I asked if she would come over and talk with my kids about that experience. This was not a formal presentation. So I want to explain that it doesn't have to be a co-op. It doesn't have to be a big slideshow that you ask these people to do. Instead, my friend just came over for lunch and chatted with my kids around the kitchen table and gave us her experiences in China. Absolutely fascinating. I loved it every bit as much as I would have loved a formal presentation. Then my husband had a friend who was actually a friend through his martial arts training who had an incredible moth collection, probably one of the biggest moth collections, most likely in the country. It was absolutely massive, and he was an expert on moths. I thought that my larger homeschool support group, not just my family-based co-op, would love his presentation on moths, and I was right. So many families turned out to hear him present everything that he knew about moths and then had all of his moths on display for the kids to check out. Um, it was just amazing. And I felt so fortunate to, to know George. He is now uh, passed on, but um, that I invited him to share this great resource that he had with the larger homeschooling community. 
my husband had another friend who had an, an incredible career that we could take advantage of as homeschoolers. And that is, she is a judge. She invited our co-op to come into the courthouse. And I thought that she would just talk with us about being a judge. You know, we would get to see the courtroom. That was going to be wonderful. But she went a step further and arranged for the kids to have a mock trial. She would tell the kids where to sit and and she would conduct herself like it was a trial. An amazing experience. I know I keep saying that, but it was an incredible experience. And I was blown away by the time and attention that our friends and family members and neighbors and, and church family put into their sharing with the kids. Um, just incredible. And then the final friend that I want to talk about is our friend, Joe. My husband had played tennis with him also. And Joe was giving tours of the Italian part of our city, which is St. Louis, Missouri. And he, he did this, um, for money. He, he was retired, but he was doing that for a side income. He was incredibly knowledgeable, incredibly funny, uh, guy. And I knew it was going to be just amazing for lack of a better word. And I had signed up for him to lead this as a homeschool field trip with a larger group. And in fact, 60 families or 60 people, it would, I would say 60 people were signed up to do that tour with a large waiting list. Well, when it came to the actual day and it wasn't, there wasn't a blizzard, it wasn't anything like that. But when it came to the actual day, it was a very, very small group of people for this wonderful, fascinating, fun tour that we took. We, we did so many different things. It was not just like walk around and, and talk about history. It was so much more than that. And people had just not shown up. And he had arranged for us to have lunch at this delicious Italian restaurant. And so there was all this food prepared and there weren't enough people to eat it. And he was disappointed and I was embarrassed, honestly. And this is a problem. It's a real problem in the homeschooling community. We have so much freedom that we can get up and say, you know, I was going to do such and so I was going to go here, but I don't feel like it. And, and we have the freedom to do that. But when we have committed ourselves to a field trip, to a tour, to an appointment, and we don't show up, it really gives the whole homeschool community a black eye. Um, we made the best, the best of it. We did have some people who were able to go through um, and enjoy that tour. And um, it, it was a great time. I have wonderful memories of it. And um, Joe has since been featured in a documentary and he has co-written a book on Italian history in our area. And uh, Joe is now in hospice. And I would ask you to be in prayer for him. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful man. I want to conclude as you think about the family members, the church family, the neighbors and the friends and the homeschoolers, you know, who could be a great human resource for your school. I want you to think about how they can bless you. They can bless you and your kids so much, but we can also bless them. We had a number of the people that I just described to you who are not believers. And when we show interest in them, when we value them and their experiences or their skills, 
we are witnessing to them. And I just encourage you to think about who you could involve in your homeschool and who you could take advantage of, their experiences, their skills, their hobbies, their passion, and share that with your kids. I don't have many regrets in my homeschooling, thankfully. But honestly, as I thought about this particular issue, I do have some. There are so many more people I could have involved in my homeschool to enrich my children's education and also to enrich their lives with my family and with our homeschooling community. So I hope that gives you some food for thought. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Have a happy homeschool week.